Stockton, and I am here with Robin Elkins. And Hi. <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Hi. Robin. It is such a pleasure to have you. And happy Administrative Professionals Day, because we are celebrating today um, all of you out there, whether you are in the job market or you're happily employed, it is definitely a day to celebrate all of you. And of course, uh, Robin is the perfect person to share with us what is the pulse of the, of the nation or the world right now. And I want to give her a wonderful uh, introduction before we go into a fascinating conversation because I have learned so much lately about what is going on in the job market. And so Robin is the Vice President of Operations of Two's Company, and they are a staffing and recruiting firm here in Central Florida. They specialize in recruitment of administrative accounting, finance, and technology throughout the Central Florida area. Um, she has been in the staffing and recruiting industry for over a decade. And she has built a really strong network nationwide and in Central Florida as well. Robin spent the first several years of her career specializing in clinical and non-clinical recruitment for healthcare companies across the country. But her true passion is being able to see her talent change lives in the city that she calls home, which is Orlando, right? That is, that is correct. Yes. Uh, you take pride in building relationships, growing teams, and developing strategies across organizations. She is driven by helping pair talent to shape the future of organizations she partners with, allowing them to grow and scale. Isn't that the dream of every company and every person? <laughs> uh, Robin is also a Florida State Seminole. So better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> also a member of Leadership Orlando, and you are a Lead Forward alumnus and sits on the board of directors of muscular dis of the Muscular Dystrophy Association of Central Florida. And you're the proud mother of two children. So yes, so you do a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a lot of juggling, um, trying to, uh, the balancing act is difficult, but fun. That's fantastic. And, and Robin is, is kind of a new, a new friend, acquaintance. We have, uh, we met each other through a, another association that I was actually um, sharing what I do. And then uh, we thought, oh my goodness, we definitely have, have a lot of synergy. Yes, yes. And of course, you know, here she is, and she is a wealth of information. So Robin, you know, our, our, what we were talking about is um, what has happened in your industry over the past 12 years. I, 12 months, 12 months. sorry. Well, 12 years, <laughs> we could be here for a while. But yes, um, over the last 12 months. 12 months. Uh, it has, the, the pandemic has really flipped the recruiting industry on its head. So uh, a year ago at this time, we were, you know, fiddling uh, our, our fingers, our thumbs, and just wondering where, where are the jobs? Um, how do we pivot? And we went from working 70 something jobs in the first week of March to less than a dozen in a period of two weeks. Um, so what we've seen is we need to diversify. Um, we need to be involved in every industry so that um, we aren't you know, tied to just one like hospitality. Um, but also I think the thing that has changed most um, and it will continue to move this way is the change from in-person interviews to virtual interviews. Mm -hmm. Prior to COVID, um, the virtual interviews were not popular at all. People were very uncomfortable 
being in front of the camera. Um, more times than not, when we would schedule a virtual interview, people would decline. Um, they, there's a lack of engagement. And so uh, in order to be considered for any of these jobs, you must be comfortable getting in front of a camera and doing a virtual interview that way. And it's not organic, uh, but it can be learned. And I think that's um, something that we've been talking about the last couple of days, Leslie, is how do we make this process a little bit more comfortable? And how can you prepare on the front end to wow uh, your employers? Yes. And that is, like you said, it, it was interesting speaking to you about this and and you were kind of sharing with me a couple of the, the issues that were going on with that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people, and, and we talk about what, what you were saying um, was really that, you know, that, that virtual presence, that, you know, that, that powerful, that powerful presence. So what are, what are some of the things that you could share how someone could really, you know, be, have, have an impactful um, interview? Sure. Um, well, you and I discussed, you know, in the first 15 seconds of an interview, most potential uh, employers have already made a decision on how they want the interview to go. So mm -hmm. if we talk about the first 15 seconds, how to make impact, I would say preparation is key. If you are uh, on a personal interview, uh, make sure that you do the commute to the, to the interview uh, location or site in advance. Make sure you show up early, dress to impress, uh, keep your cell phone in the car, and uh, don't chew gum, firm handshakes and eye contact are a must. Some pretty... Okay, so on the flip side, if we're looking at virtual interviews, how do you wow your uh, prospective employer in the first 15 seconds? Again, it's, it's all about preparation. Um, you know, making sure that uh, your camera is working properly, the audio is on. Look at the background of where you are. Um, make sure there's nothing that you don't want your prospective employer to see. Um, that there's limited distractions, noise is limited. Um, look at and focus on the camera and be prepared to engage from the very first second that you start that interview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think that you had, um, you had mentioned a couple of things. Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of times I, I see where you, you almost have to share some very, very common things that a lot of times people don't notice because there is that absolute first impression on how people see you. And if this is, this is, should be your best, right? Yeah. Your best foot it's forward right now. Best foot forward. And just when you think you're prepared, you're not. <laughs> That just um, reminds me of last week when we were talking and I thought, I, I have my laptop, I'm here in advance. The, the link wasn't working, my camera was off um, and I had all sorts of distractions. So, uh, you know, run throughs are everything. Uh, doing something once, twice, practicing. Practicing is key too. Um, you know, I think that back in the day, everyone would say, get in front of a mirror and do your spiel, your interview in front of someone else or in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. We could do the same thing now, just bring it back and do your interview, record yourself and see what you like and what you don't like and, and evolve from there. Absolutely. It, it's, you know, again, it, it is part of it, it is a bit of acting, really, when you look at it, when anytime that you're on camera, I mean, my whole course that I do, the camera ready set is, is, is 
really having you become that protagonist because we're all our own brand now. We're all our own, you know, when you say brand, so to speak of, but you, you are, and people now are, are getting to know who you are through video, through the media, through social media. It's not that opportunity in person as much like it used to be. Right. It's not as natural, but it can be learned. Absolutely. Of course it can be learned. It is just, you know, it, it is a little intimidating, but again, it is something where now we need to invest in learning this portion that before we didn't. And exactly. there, there are processes that you can learn on how to feel more confident on camera, um, even like the interviewing process. Mm-hmm. You, were, you were sharing some things about the, um, the interviewing process and how to really prepare last mm-hmm. time when you were talking about, I mean, I've had people that have come to interview for my company that didn't research our website. (laughs) That's one of the first things that you should do. So, you know, in this industry, we're evaluating everything from the very moment that we receive your resume. So when we go about selecting the candidates that we feel are strong fits for our clients, we're reviewing the resume for for a particular skill set. We're contacting that candidate and everything from there is an interview, whether you like it or not. Um, it's, it's the way the, the sense of urgency from the candidate, are they quick to respond? Are they flexible to interview? Are they adaptable? What is their communication style? How formal are they? How informal are they? And, uh, and grammar, all of those things play a part of this process. Um, Once we do connect, once we do have a a personal interview or a virtual interview with these candidates, um, we want to make sure that they have researched ourselves, they've researched the company that we're interviewing for them for, they understand um, the job description, and they can adapt their background, uh, their resume, as it relates to the job that we have available. That's great. And so one, um, with that said, when you are researching them, I know you and I spoke a little bit about you go straight to LinkedIn. Yeah. So uh, unlike the entertainment industry that um, may have a headshot associated with a resume, because we specialize in the uh, recruitment of administrative accounting and finance and technology candidates here in Central Florida. Um, We typically don't have that, but what we do have is LinkedIn. As soon as I get a resume, I'm going on LinkedIn and I'm checking out that person's profile to include their picture. I wanna make sure that they have a professional uh, photograph or headshot on their profile and that the experience matches up with the resume. Mm -hmm. And that again, they have good formatting, proper grammar, and that the position that they are applying to and the person that I am seeing on LinkedIn, um, that it represents their personal brand. Uh, So for example, if you come to me and you're looking for a marketing manager position and your profile lacks luster. I'm going to question maybe how strong of a marketing professional you are. Um, LinkedIn is really your virtual resume uh, for for everyone to view. So I would make sure that that, again, that picture is a great representation of who you are and what you do, and that the profile is in line um, as well in that it matches dates, it matches experience, titles, um, because that is uh, just a great representative of, or gr- great representation of your, of your resume, um, but in a virtual setting. Yes. Yeah. It, it, 
one thing, and again, I'll just chime in a little bit here is that uh, oftentimes people find themselves, oh, I look great in this picture and it's, it's old or mm -hmm. it's a picture that they no longer look like that or they, or they got a professional headshot and they had a great makeup artist and they loved how they look. But then when you show up on your interview or anywhere else or on, on, on a webinar, you look nothing like that because it's not a look that you necessarily duplicate or it's not on brand for really who you are. Mm -hmm. And that is what I call a, you know, it's, it's a brand disconnect. You're, you're really, you know, you have to have that, that cohesion because at that point you're also losing trust because that person is wondering like, wow, that's not, she looked nothing like that. And, and this is a huge thing, especially for myself coming from film and television mm -hmm. is when an actor would send a picture and then they get, you know, they get an audition. Now, of course, now all of it's done virtually. So it's not that big of an issue anymore, but when you are not current on what you look like, or if you are, um, not necessarily putting in, uh, I guess, really the the energy or the uh, investment into your own personal branding, that can, you know, it can be a pro and a con for you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I feel when I am looking at, because I work a lot with professionals and helping them with their personal branding, uh, it, it is something that really needs to be, like you were saying, it's part of, of your personality, of your essence, of your style, and it doesn't have to be the most glamorous, but like you, you were saying, of, of it being polished and being aligned with the job that you do. I think that's a big thing. Right, absolutely. You had mentioned that it can cause distrust from the very moment that your employer meets you over a virtual interview, it's very much the case. And I would encourage um, people who are out there looking for jobs, you don't necessarily have to have professional headshots done, um, but I would make sure that, you know, that what shows up on camera um, or during an interview is the same person that, that is in that uh, profile picture. Um, it's, it's very important and it doesn't need to be um, a costly thing to you, mm -hmm. um, but you also want to make sure that you feel comfortable as well. Right. Well, I think that, again, you know, we invest a lot of money in education, in, you know, we used to invest a lot of money in letterheads and business cards. And, we, we used yeah. to invest a lot of money in someone writing your resume, even. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what is the difference here when you just are going to invest a little bit more in, in, you know, what your, your virtual brand is or. Absolutely. Your, yep. It's a necessity now it's, we don't have to spend money on business cards anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. we do have to spend it now in an area. Now, how can, how can someone kind of separate themselves from the rest? What are some tips that you could that you could give people to really be impactful when they are maybe wanting to, you know, let's say it's it's someone that is wanting to, you know, grow within their industry or wanting to, you know, just have a, a, a stronger presence or be able to um, be more, I guess, appealing to other companies. Sure. So it depends on the role, um, but I'm going to, I want to stick with that marketing professional example. Mm -hmm. I think that if you were to go uh, interview for a company, maybe one of the questions that they ask is, can I see your portfolio? If you can add now, um, and I'm, again, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn because it's such a dynamic platform, but there's a lot that you can add to your profile. You can add a link that goes to your portfolio. You um, can add blogs, whether they're um, video blogs or written blogs. Think that everything that's touched on there can be seen by 
your prospective employer, the public, um, everything needs to be polished and proper. Um, so anything that can go above and beyond, um, uh, you know, to show who you are, your capabilities is, is very insightful and I think will be extremely helpful as you look for uh, future opportunities. I think that that's great. And, and the, the more I, you know, the, the more you say things, it just, it makes sense. However, it takes time. It takes time to, you know, stay current and post your things as a makeup artist and hiring other makeup artists. I can't tell you the amount of, of makeup artists now that they say they're makeup artists, but they don't have a portfolio. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's ridiculous, really. I mean, you need a body of, you have to show your body of work and that's, it can't just be on a resume, especially if you're in a very virtual industry like, or visual industry like I am. Uh -huh. uh, that is so important to be able to, to showcase. And yeah. I'm just gonna add in there, you want to make sure that you're being truthful and legitimate about your, your portfolio as well. <laughs> Something that you feel like it's not necessary to say, but we see it more often than not that um, we, we do reference checks. You can find everything on the internet, be truthful. Um, it'll, it'll get you way further than if you're, you're not. <laughs> I know it seems unbelievable that you would have to say, but I, I think the longer you're in an industry, you and I'm sure you probably see the gamut of who you've worked for. I've had people say they've worked for me. They've never worked for me before. You know, on see, I can write a book. I can write a book about what I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> So just because you wanted to actually have that job doesn't mean you necessarily had it. Right. <laughs> um. So let's see here. Uh, how could you share a little bit about maybe some candidates that are that are getting into they're coming out of college and they're going into the industry? Sure. I um I think that some schools have done a college students a disservice and not experiencing their fields early enough. So my, my, um, my advice is while you're in school, try to get a internship or some real life experience in your industry so that when you do graduate and you start the interview process, that's already extremely intimidating. You have some real life examples to bring with you. So when they're asking you questions of what would you do in this situation, these situational interview questions, you don't have to, um, you know, uh, falsify that experience. You can say that during my internship, I was able to do X, Y, and Z, and that's why I will be good for this position. So all, your, all of um, the employers out there, they wanna know, what value add, your, what type of value you're going to bring to a position. And I don't think they need a lot of experience under their belt, but um, any background or experience as it relates to the job description, um, it's going to be helpful for you to um, formulate that prior to uh, starting that process. Mm. Also, for the college students who haven't done the interviews. Research is so important. You mentioned that earlier on in our discussion today. Make sure not only do you know exactly what the company does, check out their financials. Know who you are interviewing with. So uh, check out their LinkedIn profile. Do a Google search. Um, you know, prior to COVID, when you were going into someone's office, it was so easy to see a lemon tree behind Robin's desk and um, ask, you know, why do you have a lemon tree and build your building rapport? Um, that's not so easy in this virtual environment. So if, you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable with who you're interviewing with, understand their backgrounds, um, then you're gonna 
you're going to do so much better um, in this process. Um, and I would also say, know your strengths and weaknesses. Everyone has weaknesses. It's, it's not a negative thing to share that, um, you know, you could do better at something. Mm -hmm. A prospective employer, employer wants to hear that. You just have to really be cautious on, on you know, how you're sharing that. Um, but absolutely know at least five strengths that you know you can bring to the table from day one. Oh, that is gold. That is gold. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, because sure. any employer, I'm again, if I hire someone, I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for someone that's hungry, that's eager, that is that I can teach you to become a better makeup artist, but I can't give you that that drive or that, you know, someone that just kind of sees things that need to be done versus told every single step. You yep. know, those type of things, those strengths, I think it's so invaluable to to know it. And, you know, we do ask a question actually. Um, can you tell us one thing as to why we wouldn't hire you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> another another great question is, and if they've had experience, is what would your former boss say is something that you may need to work on? Ah. But you had mentioned you want to you want to hear these things, but we also want to make sure that they can live them too. And and when they they talk to this company, make sure you're enthusiastic about the job. If if you're not, it we you can see right through it. And um, and I think that more prospective employers are more willing to give someone a shot who's eager than to someone who even has relatable experience. True. It's very true. Because we look at it from a standpoint, and of course I'm speaking as, as an employer, um, we it's it's a very expensive process that hiring first year process for an employer. And you want someone that's going to give you longevity and bring things mm -hmm. to the table. Um, and that, that eagerness, I think, is huge. And sometimes you can't show an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's the very most expensive thing for an organization is to hire and train employees. So um, if they, if the employer knows how to do it right, they're looking for that enthusiasm to ensure that their culture is not disrupted by someone who isn't a match. Right, right. Well said. Thank you. You're welcome. I love it. Oh my goodness. Robin, you are a wealth of information. And I hope that this has been helpful to you know if you are out there looking for a job i know this market has been so different robin i just wanted to finish with there was one piece that we had spoken about last week about how the job market has opened up now because of working from home yes yes i mean things have really changed so much we're trying to keep up um in our industry as, as best as we can. But I will say, just throwing some numbers out there in the state of Florida, our unemployment is under 6%. Um, we have a lot of folks in the hospitality industry that have been affected. But I would say that um, oh, well, the staffing and recruiting industry is up 11% pre-COVID numbers. So if our industry is busy, that means that um, industries across the nation are hiring. And I feel it right now. We have so many jobs open. Um, take a look at our website for anyone who is local or remote who's looking for jobs. Um, an influx of jobs have come in in just the last six weeks. Um, so I think there's a ton of opportunity but I will say there's there's heavy competition. Um, most companies are addressing the work from home um, concept. So uh, 
you know, on the short term, I think most companies have um, the ability to work from home. But with that said, you're no, no longer competing against the local marketplace, you're, you're competing against nationwide. So you have a lot more people in your talent pool. So what does that mean to you is that you need to sharpen up those interview skills, those virtual interview skills, and ensure that you're investing in yourself and your personal brand um, to ensure that you're uh, seen in the best light and um, it's, it's wild out there. And um, I would just, uh, you know, take a breath. And if you question, you know, how do I do something, feel free to, to contact me and I can provide you um, with articles, with other interview tips to help you through this process. Absolutely. So for them to reach you, Robin, yes. what is the best way? So um, you can email me. My email address is relkins, that's R-E-L-K-I-N-S at twoscompany.com. That's twos with an S and company singular. Um, and then you can call into our office. Uh, our office number is 407 956-6180. And our website is www.twoscompany.com. That is fantastic. So that's really exciting news to know that there is a there are a lot of jobs out there for people because I know a lot of people are looking. And of course, if you are interested in up leveling your brand, looking at really um, working on that on that visual piece, then you can go to cameraReadyset.com. We have a whole course on how to feel confident and, uh, and have some fun with a course and, and you know, ace these interviews, up level yourself, make yourself more memorable and be the protagonist of your brand. That's what I truly believe. And thank you so much, Robin. We're gonna put all of your information. Thank you for in having there. me. Yes, and I am excited uh, to see, and I would love for people to post on there. We've had some, actually some nice comments here, a wonderful topic of discussion. And um, this is from Anna Garcia. She says, I think it's worth mentioning to really study your resume. If you list an experience down on it, you really know how to do the task and be able to explain it. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Uh, building rapport is so important, um, great information. So we've had, you know, quite a few comments through our Facebook Live. And so definitely check out Two's company, uh, their website. You can check out Cara Cosmetics. And we will see you on the next one. And Robin, I will invite you to come back again. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Looking forward to it. Everyone awesome. happy Administrative Professionals Day. Happy Administrative Professionals Day. And we will be posting because we have a giveaway on how to win a camera ready set uh, course and a resume review as well. Resume makeover resume makeover. So that is uh, close to a $600 value. And I'm going to post that in our Facebook Live. So thank you so much, Robin. And thank you. have a wonderful, wonderful day, everyone. Bye. Bye.